Unreal Engine 5 is awesome. It's a big of a deal as the hype that is around it at the moment. UE5 has come a long way since its early access release back in May 2021. We had Early Access 1, Early Access 2, Preview and now the official 5.0. The official release seems much more stable with many of the major bugs and issues now resolved. I have been much happier working with the official version than I was with the earlier iterations. If you had a good read through the official release notes, you will have seen the very long list of fixes and debugs that Epic has made in the latest version. I'm pretty sure I have contributed to that list somewhere by sending bug reports. The official release of UE5 is undoubtedly a big step forward, but it's not a perfect package right out of the box as you might think. I think it's still an ongoing process that is still very much under development and tweaking. So let me rephrase my first remark. Unreal Engine 5 is going to be awesome. There are still these little issues here and there that stops me from finally letting go and uninstalling UE4 from my PC. If you are planning to build something in UE5, I think these points will be useful to know about, especially in the planning stages. Firstly, Nanite isn't perfect. I couldn't use ray trace shadows in combination with Nanite meshes because they were causing weird artifacts. I couldn't find a solution to this other than just turn off ray trace shadows whenever I was using Nanite. Reflections and translucency isn't working intuitively yet. I mean it's good in some respects with Lumen, but generally still not working as you'd expect. And when I tried using ray trace reflections and translucency instead of Lumen, I kept getting weird blue tints in my materials which made it unusable. Only workaround I could find was using Path Tracer instead of the UE5 default renderer. But of course Path Tracer is not real time. William Forsher shows you this in detail in his recent video. He shows you some workarounds to this issue as well. So check it out if you have to use reflections and translucency in your UE5 project. Depth of field has some issues. When I push the camera too close to a foreground object, it causes all sorts of problems for me. Admittedly, the problem causing objects were mostly foliage, but this is annoying because when I go out to shoot in real life, I often use foliage and trees as foreground and background elements. Also, when reflective surfaces were out of focus, it caused the weird glittering and ant crawling effect. Maybe you start to see a trend here, reflective surfaces and out of focus elements. I couldn't find the direct solution, so I had to work around this issue as well. I replaced the foliage with other things as foreground elements and adjusted roughness in my materials to mitigate the glittering. There is a whip browser slash widget feature in Unreal Engine. I could watch my own YouTube videos right inside the level I made. Gets really meta. That is, I could in UE4. For some reason, heavens tell me I am wrong. I can't do this anymore in UE5. I can still make the widget and show a web page and interact with it, but I can't get it to autoplay videos. This was a letdown for me as I was planning to make a virtual gallery and screening environment with embedded videos that play when you enter a specific boundary. I sincerely hope they bring this back in the next update. Similar to the web widget, media player function in Unreal Engine 5 has some limitations at the moment. I found that video files won't play when you set the project to DirectX 12 you can use JPEG sequences as a workaround though. But of course, JPEG sequences can get quite big and doesn't have sound. Some plugins that I've been using often has not yet been updated for 5.0. I have been using the Sketchfab plugin up to UE5 early access. It made things easier when I wanted to download and import assets from Sketchfab to Unreal. However, to my knowledge, this plugin has not yet been made available for UE5. I hear they are working on it, so hopefully it'll be updated soon. And I think this will be the case for a lot of other plugins as well. So these were just some of the issues I personally encountered when I was using UE5. I'm sure there are many more that I do not know about. 
I know this sounds like a lot of complaining and whining, but I don't mean to say UE5 isn't great, because it is. I think this is an awesome time to get into 3D and start learning, specifically because of Unreal Engine. I only wanted to let you know about the limitations and issues I found. If you found this video useful, please give it a like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content. What is your experience with UE5 like? Are there any issues you found? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching.